So let's go through specific examples now for each of these three cases. So starting with case one, let's say that you provide a service for $5,000 and got paid in cash. So remember the first case, you earn the revenue now, you provided the service, and you get paid now in this period. So you got paid $5,000 in cash. Well, that would be pretty simple. Cash goes up by $5,000 and then your revenue, you recognize that revenue because you provided that service. Uh, sorry, I should have put the number first, it's all good. Like that. And then that would be it for this transaction, right? So your cash goes up and you provided the service, so you earn the revenue in this period so you recognize that revenue for $5,000 as well. Now moving on to case two, where you're earning the revenue now, but you're gonna be paid for it in the future. So let's say on June 1st, you provided a service on account worth 6,400. Now, whenever you see something on account, whether you buy something on account, or you provide a service or deliver a good on account, it means that you're gonna be paid for it later right, in a future period, or if you bought something on account, you're going to pay for it later in a future period. So you provide a service on account worth $6,400, $6,400, you'll be paid for it in four installments at the end of the next four months, right? So from this sentence, you could tell you provided the service, so you earned the revenue now, but you're going to be paid for it in the future in four installments at the end of the next four months. So what would happen right now is you would recognize the revenue, 6,400. So the service revenue goes up, but you haven't paid, uh, been paid for it yet. So what would happen is you would, your assets would increase by 6,400, but it would be the accounts receivable. It wouldn't be cash, it would be accounts receivable. And notice in this case, left side and the right side are balancing out. So we're all good. And this would be on June 1st. And then what would happen as time goes by is you get paid for this service that you already provided. And so what would happen is it's gonna be in four installments. So 6,400 divided by four gives us 1,600, 1,600. So at the end of June, so June 30th, what would happen is $1,600 cash comes in and then the accounts receivable goes down by $1,600. All right, and then uh, July 31st, at the end of the next month, same thing. 1,600 cash comes in, that goes up, and then 1,600, the accounts receivable goes down. Right, so at this point, at July 31st, after you receive this cash here, you're still gonna be O3200. The accounts receivable is gonna be 3200 on the balance sheet. That makes sense because you start off with 6400, but then it went down by 1600, went down by 1600. And so this transaction here would happen at the end of August and then the end of September. And then this whole, let's say, cycle, for lack of a better word, would be complete. So there would be four of these transactions happening. Right, so that's what happens. You can earn revenue in a period, but get paid for it, receive the cash in future periods. And if that happens, then what's gonna happen is you're initially gonna have an account receivable on that asset side. And then finally, case three, where the unearned revenue comes in, is when you're gonna earn revenue in the future, but you've been paid for it now. So. Here we have, let's say you created a software that customers pay an annual subscription of $720 for on June 1st. You recognize the revenue at the end of every month. 
So usually subscriptions, the payment happens at the beginning of a period, and then that service is provided throughout. So here, so you're the company that provides the software. The customer pays you $720 on June 1st. So what would happen is you would receive $720 cash on June 1st. However, you haven't provided the service yet. You've been paid for it, but you're gonna provide it in the future over the course of the upcoming year. So you can't recognize that revenue yet. So what is it? It's unearned revenue initially. So $720 would make the liabilities go up and the account would be unearned revenue. Remember, it's a liability account. So that's what would happen right now on June 1st, this transaction. And now as time goes on, you provide that service, whatever that uh, software is doing for the customer. So it says you recognize the revenue at the end of every month. So what would happen on June 30th is remember this is for a whole year, 720. So every month, if you divide this by 12, you would end up with $60. That's how much revenue you're going to earn every month for uh, this subscription. So what would happen in that first month at the end of June, June 30th, you recognize that revenue for $60. That'll be service revenue. And then what's the other um, entry, well, the unearned revenue would go down. That liability would go down. So uh, the unearned revenue would go down by $60. Because 60 of that 720 on June 30th, you don't owe that service anymore, right? It's been taken care of, you recognized it over here. So that would be the transaction for June 30th. And it would be that same transaction over the next 11 months, right? So on Ju uh, July 31st, so for July, that unearned revenue goes down further by 60 and you earn 60 more in service revenue, like that. So there would be basically 12 of those transactions. Okay, so you could be paid for services or goods you're gonna deliver in the future. And then when that happens, remember this case three, that's when that unearned revenue comes in. And unearned revenue, remember, it's a liability account. It's on the balance sheet. And then as time goes on, you recognize that revenue and then that unearned revenue account goes down with time. So there's that preliminary step that is happening. And there could be a bunch of different cases for unearned revenue. Actually, if you remember the cases that we went over for prepaid expenses, where we had like prepaid rent or there was prepaid insurance, unearned revenue is from the other side. So if you remember with prepaid expenses, we were paying the rent, we had prepaid rent, and then we would recognize that rent expense. Well, if you were the landlord of that transaction, your um, equation would look something like this. You would get that cash ahead of time for the rent that you have to provide in the upcoming months. So that cash goes up and then you'd have unearned revenue here. And then as those months went on, unearned revenue would go down and you would recognize that uh, revenue, you could call it rent revenue. Or if you were an insurance company, it would be similar to this. Someone is paying you a premium, let's say for a year, a one year insurance policy, they pay you cash, you have unearned revenue, and then as the months or weeks or whatever it is goes on, you would recognize that revenue from that insurance policy, and then that unearned revenue account would go down with time. 
Okay, so different uh, kinds of scenarios you run into. So it's best to keep this in mind here. And then when you read a transaction, read it carefully and just know in which of these scenarios is it gonna fall in. It's gonna fall in one, two, or three. They may even give you a sentence um, with this scenario where you're gonna earn in the future and get paid in the future, but that would just be an event. There would be no transaction that happens. The transactions only happen in cases one, two, and three for unearned revenue and prepaid expenses. So just keep those um, flow charts in mind when you read a transaction, figure out which case it is, and then we already went through the different patterns that happen for each case.